guys, bass drop keys, your friendly neighborhood Negro and a rookie mycologist. If you've been watching the channel, then you know that two weeks ago, I did the spawn to bulk for season three of the Uncle Ben's Tech. Now, unfortunately, whenever I went to check this bin to see if it was ready to put in the fruiting conditions, I found some contamination. Now, normally whenever this happens, I just go ahead and throw away the whole cake. But instead of doing that, I'm gonna try to see what I can do in order to save the cake. If you stopped by my live videos recently, then you heard me talk about it on there. On my live videos, I've had people ask me if hydrogen peroxide works in order to fight contamination with mushrooms. So I told you guys on the live video that the next time that I get contamination, I was gonna give it a try. So that's what we're gonna do. All right guys, so the footage that you're looking at right now is eight hours later. I found the contamination, then I put the lid back on there, and then I fell asleep because it was like four in the morning. But I'm up now, and it's time for us to try the hydrogen peroxide test to see if it's gonna work against this contamination. Also, you can see from the lid that there's other pools of water on top of the mycelium. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna give you guys a good look at the top of this substrate. So if you look right here, you can see that great mycelium and then you can see the water pooled on top of there. Like I said, that's just from the lid. There was condensation on top of the lid. I left the lid on top of the bin, so it just dropped down, but we can clean that up. That's not a big deal. But right there, you see that patch of contamination. I do have some hydrogen peroxide right here. It's the 3%. And so according to YouTube and Google, basically all you have to do is just take some hydrogen peroxide you don't have to mix any solution or anything like that and basically put it in a spray bottle and just spray it. I do have an additional spray bottle. This is actually the spray bottle that I use for my 99% ISO. I basically use that to clean my trimmer, but I took the ISO out of there. I put some hydrogen peroxide inside the bottle and now you can see me actually spraying the contamination. And I noticed that whenever I started spraying it, you can see that we are getting some kind of reaction out of the contamination it's actually foaming up. Oh, that's pretty cool. According to Google and YouTube, you're supposed to be able to just spray it. And as you spray it, the hydrogen peroxide actually breaks up the contamination. That's pretty cool. And so now that I see the reaction happening, I was thinking, well, how's that going to work if I just leave this on here like that? I don't know if that's going to work. So basically what I did is I just took some clean paper towels and basically I just got all that stuff up. So if you look, that's basically all I'm doing. Just taking a couple of paper towels and just getting that up. Pretty simple. And then what I would do is I would spray on it some more because I noticed, like I said, whenever I sprayed it, it caused a reaction to happen with the contamination. So I figured if I miss anything, if I just spray it, I'll see the reaction once again and I can clean it up again. So that's basically what I did. So now that I pretty much think that I got the contamination clean, Basically, I just took some more clean paper napkins or paper towels, whatever, and basically just got up that additional water that's on top of the substrate, those pools of water. It's pretty easy. I'm just patting it and it's just coming right off. No big deal. And so once I did the entire bin, I came back with the hydrogen peroxide and I sprayed in that area once again. Just want to see if I missed anything, because if it wasn't for this contamination, this would be ready to be put in fruiting conditions. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Whenever we're using the max yield bin, all you have to do is take the colonizer lid off, grab the lid that comes with the max yield bin with the self adhesive filters on there, put that on top of there. And now we put it in the fruiting conditions, super easy. And I put it back in my fruiting chamber tent, which now the fruiting chamber tent is actually acting as another incubation box for me as well, or incubation tent, because I don't have enough room in the incubation tent to fit everything. And by the way, if you guys didn't know, AC Infinity is the official tent sponsor for my channel. Use the code BASEDROPKEYS to get 10% off any order at acinfinity.com. So everything that you see inside the tent right now is basically colonizing, except for the ones with the regular lids on there. Those are the one that's actually fruiting, but the other one is still colonizing. All right, guys, it is now three days later. And right now I have the bin outside of my house on a table in my backyard. As you can see, I opened up the Max Shield bin 
and bam, you can see that the contamination came back even more aggressive than it was before. Now I did see in my research that you're supposed to use the hydrogen peroxide at the first signs of any contamination. If you guys recall, when I used the hydrogen peroxide in the last video, it was obviously already pretty much established, so that may be a reason why this didn't work. I will try it again for sure. But at any rate, since it didn't work, what we need to do is we need to go to the next step. In the last video, I told you if it didn't work, what I was gonna do is I was gonna try to scoop it out. So what I've done now is I've taken a spoon, you can see the spoon right there, and I'm spraying it down with the 70% iso alcohol. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a line in the substrate where I wanna scoop it out. As you can see, I am giving it a little space just in case it's already grown underneath the cake and I can't see it. I'm gonna give it a little space. And then also that part above the substrate, I'm gonna go ahead and take that too. So I'm gonna cut out this entire section. And as you can see, I'm putting it in a trash bag. So this right here is pretty self-explanatory. I just wanna to try to scoop out every bit of contamination and substrate, everything that's on the left of that line, I'm trying to get everything out of there. So now that I have everything scooped out, let's take a look at the liner. And if you take a look at the liner, you can actually see there's still some contamination on that liner right there. So what I decided to do is, because I know the hydrogen peroxide will break down the contamination, I grabbed the hydrogen peroxide, and as you can see, I'm spraying it down right inside the liner. And once I have it sprayed down, I'm gonna take some clean paper napkins, paper towels, whatever, and I'm gonna clean it up. So I did that a couple times, then I came back with the 70% ISO, sprayed that where the liner is, and I put more hydrogen peroxide in there and sprayed that in there as well, and I'm cleaning everything up. I did that a couple times, and now bam. Now we have all the contamination and everything on the left-hand side of this cake. We have everything cut out and we have everything cleaned up. Let me give you a look at how everything looks now. So now that I have everything cleaned up, I'm gonna put this back in a tent, but not my incubation tent or my fruiting chamber tent. I'm actually gonna use a different tent. The reason is I know that this bin is dealing with contamination, so I don't wanna have this bin around my other bins just in case. Also, I should mention, after I posted the last video that you guys seen, I did move the bin inside this tent. So I know in the video, it shows me putting it back into the fruiting chamber. But after I posted the video, I did take it out of there because I did have a plant growing inside here, but I already did the harvest, I already reset the tent, cleaned the walls, cleaned everything with the 70% iso alcohol and everything. So since I had this tent available, I moved this bin inside the tent to make sure I didn't accidentally contam anything else. All right guys, so now it's eight days later. Let's open up the Max Shield bin and see what we got. Okay, so now you guys can see we do have some mushrooms growing, which is great. Let's check to see if any of that dreaded C word came back. So I'm looking all over the cake. I'm looking at the edge of the substrate and on the liner underneath, and I don't see anything that's come back yet. So eight days later, this is looking like a normal cake. We got a couple mushrooms, what about six or seven mushrooms growing. So I'm just gonna put the lid back on there, zip up the tent, give it some more time, because you can see that those mushrooms, once they're at this point, you know that they're gonna be opening up pretty soon. So we wanna get ready to harvest. So let's just give it some more time. All right guys, so now it's 24 hours later and I'm gonna open up the Max Shield bin. As you can see, most of the mushrooms have opened up already, and there's one or two of them that's just about to open up the cap. That's the good news. The bad news is I do see the dreaded C word coming back. So if you look at the edge of the substrate, you can see that it's already coming back now. So that means that we were able to get nine more days until it came back. So if you were to ask me if I would do this again, if I was going into fruiting conditions, because usually when you're going into fruiting conditions, you know that in less than two weeks, nine days to two weeks, you're gonna have some mushrooms. So if I was going into fruiting conditions and I seen a little spot where I thought it was starting to look a little green or something, I would go ahead and cut it out so that way I could make it to harvest. So this is a method that I'll probably try again in the future. But at any rate, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these mushrooms. Also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek 
into the mixtape that I'm working on. So as I'm harvesting these mushrooms, enjoy a little sneak peek of one of my songs called Keezy McKenna. I'm taking a trip, I'll be gone for a minute. See in the future, I don't see a limit. I've gone off these shoes, let me make it explicit. You need them, I got them, I got a good ticket. I deliver these packs so it's feeling like Christmas. I'm faster than Amazon there with a quickness. I'm going off these shoes, I'm not talking hot biscuits. They damn sure be hidden, but they not delicious. E eat some of these, you just might see a spirit. Tap on my tongue and I'm coming to visit. I see every color, I'm feeling terrific. She talking to me, but I see hieroglyphics the, the rookie, my college, don't care about no critics Worrying about my need to get you some business Did me three grams, now I'm playing with I, physics I, I, I see every molecule run analytics Drop off them packs and I'm feeling like Santa Growing these mushrooms, I'm keys in McKenna Growing exotics, they smell like bananas I just got these spores and they came from Havana Four or five pounds and I shipped to Atlanta Growing blue meanies, they go to Savannah Got golden teachers, they go to Montana I gotta get paid, I'll sell to your nana Keys in McKenna, keys in McKenna Keys in McKenna, keys in McKenna Keys in McKenna you guys can also see that I finished doing the harvest. Don't these mushrooms look beautiful? Big, robust, beautiful mushrooms. The next step is I'm going to be putting these mushrooms in the dehydrator. But before I do that, I'm going to throw out this cake. If you live in a climate where mushrooms will grow, you can plant it outside and they will grow out of the ground. I'm in the desert. I've already tried to plant other cakes where I live at and I didn't get anything from it. This desert climate is not conducive for the kind of mushrooms that I'm growing. But if you live in a climate where they will grow, plant it outside. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mushrooms in the dehydrator. They're so big that I'm going to cut the caps off. Now, because these mushrooms are so big, I am going to have to dry them a longer time than I usually do. You guys know that I started doing it at a lower temperature for more time. Normally, I've been doing 120 degrees Fahrenheit for around six hours. These mushrooms are rather large, so I ended up having to dehydrate them for 10 hours. I did it for six hours, as you can see here. Came back and checked them. They still needed to go longer. So I did it for another four hours. And after that, everything was dry and crispy, exactly how we want it. So as you can see here, the mushrooms are finished dehydrating. As I just said, I'm going to weigh them up and find out how much dried mushrooms did we get from these six or seven mushrooms. So as I'm weighing it up, we got exactly 25 grams of dried mushrooms. But man, don't they look beautiful? So in the end, is this the method that I will use again? If I was in fruity conditions, I definitely will. Because if you're in fruity conditions, it'll give you enough time so that you can make it to your harvest. In the comment section, let me know what other methods you want me to try when dealing with the dreaded C word. We've tried hydrogen peroxide and cutting it out. You guys let me know what else you want me to try. If you want to support me and the channel, come over to the rookiemycologist.com. I have some great t-shirts slides stickers and a bunch of other merch that you'll love also if you guys are missing the mycology videos that i made come over to my website bassdropkeys.tv where i have my entire mycology catalog at your disposal so unfortunately you can't see those videos on youtube anymore thanks to youtube but i am still making mycology videos so if you want to see all of my old videos there's over a hundred mycology videos on my website and all of my new videos i got brand new videos dropping tomorrow come over to my website and subscribe bassdropkeys.tv i appreciate all of you guys thanks for the love i hope to see all of you on the site and i'll see you the next time i'm out much love